committee for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity uh, to talk about uh, this uh, modality of treatment in uh, non-healing diabetic wounds. Um, first of all, we, we need to know what do, I, do we mean by non-healing, or actually it's better to say that what are the hard to heal wounds. Uh, this is defined by the consensus uh, meeting in 2019 for wound management, which um, uh, provided the timers plate for a place a framework for uh, management of wounds, and they define it as a wound that has not reduced in size by more than 40 to 50 percent at four weeks. Why is this a problem? Uh, first, it affects the patient's quality of life as well as being a burden on the healthcare system. We need a lot of nursing time, length of stay, increased cost of dressings and other products, and we have always the risk of reinfection, even if we already got uh, proper control of the infection initially. So, uh, th there are currently a lot of uh, research and innovations aiming at regeneration, not only wound healing, but also regeneration. I'm mentioning among those the amnion chorion based uh, grafts, the platelet rich plasma, oxygen therapy, whether in hyperbaric chambers or uh, local uh, oxygen sprays. Uh, sucrose, octosulfates, and, and many other uh, treatments. Um, maybe the, the first four of them are endorsed by the International Working Group of Diabetic Foot uh, Guidelines published early this year. And uh, my, my focus today will be on uh, the placental-derived products. Um, uh, this is mentioned in recommendation number 23 as uh, an adjunct therapy to standard care where standard care alone has failed to heal the diabetic foot wound. So what is the amniotic membrane? It's the inner lining of the placenta, and uh, as you see, uh, it has um, uh, an, an epithelial cell layer, basement membrane, compact layer, fibroblast layer. Uh, it, uh, it provides stem cells, which could be mesenchymal or epithelial uh, stem cells. It provides growth factors, many interleukins, and uh, First of all, a scaffold, which is the platform where uh, all these cells and factors interact together to provide healing. Um, I'm doing this work with uh, my colleagues in the Egyptian Atomic Energy uh, Authority. Uh, uh, Dr. Nashwar Adwan is a professor of dermatology and she's the head of the amniotic preparation lab in the authority. And uh, what are they doing? Uh, I'm, I'm considering them part of my multidisciplinary team. I'm adding to this the lab part here, the skin lab. And uh, they, they get the harvested amniotic membranes from uh, Ministry of Health Hospitals. This is done under surveillance and approval of the Ministry of Health. Uh, the membranes are delivered to the authority, cooled, and uh, there they make a virology screen. Then they um, proceed with washing of the membranes and drying, followed by packaging, and finally irradiation. On the left side, you can see the, the shape of the sheet or the membrane after drying. And on the right side, this is the package after they have uh, irradiated it and they call it Regi Pro. This is a registered trademark by the authority. How to use it? First of all, we, we need to know that the, the correct thing has to be done. You need to treat the underlying cause before considering such a modality of treatment. You, if you have a peripheral arterial disease, revascularization should be performed first. If you have a pressure ulcer, this has to be offloaded. If you have infection, this has to be drained. So you should never embark on uh, using a new modality of uh, treatment while leaving the standard of care without doing the proper thing that you usually do for a diabetic foot ulcer. So if you have corrected the underlying cause, uh, and you have a non-healing or hard to heal wound, you may use it. Uh, first, there's proper washing with saline. Uh, the use of antimicrobial agents is allowed if indicated. And then you apply the craft over the wound. If you have gapes, you may use um, dried amniotic membrane powder to fill the gaps. Then you close with the second dressing, wait for one week, and then observe the wound again. If it's not completely epithelialized, you may consider putting another membrane, another graft for the remaining area, and then you look after one week, you continue weekly observation until you find the progress is satisfactory and you have closure, closure of the wound. 
this was supported first by in vitro studies and animal studies showing increased cellular growth using these membranes and this followed by clinical uh, studies and uh, this uh, study published in 2020 uh, in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine concluded that uh, the addressing of ulcers with irradiated human amniotic membrane induced fast healing without complication um, I will show you just a few examples. This is a 48-year uh, lady uh, with uh, a wound that looked uh, very benign and very easily to handle, but even after proper deprivement and after uh, taking care of everything, the wound remained like this for more than two months without any attempt of healing. But after the use of the placental-based grafts, two weeks were enough to get this outcome here. Um, I have a lot of examples, but I'm going quickly through this. Uh, I'm just bringing uh, difficult cases with the plantar wounds and uh, areas that you all know are difficult to heal, like the sole here below the toes, and um, again below the toes, and you, you see, can see good healing. And uh, this patient here is uh, a Schuppert amputation stump, and uh, it was difficult to heal until finally healed with the use of the placental-based grafts just a dorsal uh, ulcer again healed completely so um, actually to have more evidence uh, there is a registration of a clinical uh, trial you can see uh, you can uh, check it by checking the id identifier of this uh, study using of radiated onion dressing for the treatment of skin ulcer i hope uh, that it uh, brings us a good results but this is not the only evidence. Actually, there are already a lot of randomized controlled trials proving the efficacy of uh, using this modality of treatment. I'm just uh, citing here the last one of them published in 2022, uh, a randomized controlled trial using actually three modalities of treatment, the amniotic uh, membrane-based grafts and platelet-derived growth factors as compared to the standard of care. And uh, the study showed that in treating diabetic foot ulcers, dressings with dehydrated onion or a gel containing platelet-derived growth factor has advantages over conventional deployment and dressing methods. Uh, you all know the International, International Working Group of Diabetic Food Guidelines published in May this year, and in the chapter concerning the wound healing, they um, uh, considered the use of placental drug products as ad adjunct therapy to standard of care, where standard of care alone has failed. And this was based on uh, the availability of a lot of uh, randomized control trials proving this uh, treatment modality efficacy. So to summarize, the use of placental-based grafts should be in the armamentarium of a physician or surgeon dealing with the heart to heal diabetic foot ulcer. Management of diabetic foot should always remain multidisciplinary management Tissue regeneration innovations are the largest, are the target of extensive research at present aiming at healing of hard to heal wounds. Thank you.